Here's our spindle drive. I had the blown up IGBTs in the new leg. Now here I got a resolver from this IRT motor fed into 4CN here. And here's our control. We got UV and W connected to the light bulbs over there. Let's fire this thing up. See what it does. We'll enable the drive to run. Now it's hunting based upon that resolver feedback right there, and that's all I can do with it. I don't have the actual motor that runs on this drive. So all I can do is run it on the light bulb bank over there. That was a chore getting that thing apart and put back together. We'll go over here in a little bit and look at the waveforms on that oscilloscope. Give me a little bit to move the camera over there in front of that oscilloscope. We'll take a look at those waveforms. These are the waveforms from U to V. See how it has good high side and low side pulse width modulation. Looks real good. the motor or should I say stop the light bulbs <laughs> and then we're going to move from U to W that looks good too U to V U to W and V to W should all look the same. Okay, let me stop the motor. And we'll go from V to W. Nice. Nice. folks that one right there was a bear that was a grizzly bear but it looks like we got it thank you for stopping by we'll see you next time everybody we made it to another day <laughs> it's cold outside I imagine tomorrow morning we'll be waking up to some ice better be careful on the way to work now here are my connections that I used to test that Yaskawa very speed 
626MT2. Uh, over here is a 50 pin Honda connector and on pin 12 and 13 we connect those directly to signal ground on pin 15. We have to make those otherwise that drive will not run. This is the ready input and this is the emergency stop input on 12 and 13. On 16 and 17, this is run forward on 16 and run reverse on 17. Close one or the other to pin 15 and that will allow that drive to run forward or reverse. Over here we have the spindle motor connections on U, V, and W. Now these are lug bolts. <laughs> They're very good size, not too, not too big, but I drew them out like this just for simplicity's sake. I don't have that spindle motor with resolver feedback, so I connected a bank of light bulbs that are configured in delta configuration. So we have six light bulbs between U and V, six light bulbs between U and W, and six light bulbs between V and W to make delta configuration. I'll draw a little picture now of those light bulbs and I'll put it up at the end of the video as long, uh, along with this uh, diagram right here. Let's move down a little bit. There's the control inputs and the motor. We'll move down a little bit and we'll look at the other connections. Now here on the 4CN connector, this is a Honda 20 pin connector, we have the resolver feedback. On pins 1 and 2, we have sign 1 and sign 2, the sign connections from the resolver, uh, pin 2 being signal ground. Pin 3 also being signal ground, as well as pin 8 down here. The cosine, cosine 1 goes into pin 4, cosine 2 goes into pin 3. Now the excitation voltage for that resolver, excitation 1 goes on pin 5 and excitation 2 goes on pin 6. Here the OH terminal on pin 7 is the motor thermal. That's the motor thermostat, and I just jump it out with a, with a jumper wire from pin 7 to pin 8. On the left side of the drive, if you had the drive hanging on the wall, on the left side of the drive, about midway of the control board, is a three terminal terminal board. That's for your fan overload switch. Uh, if you have an external fan cooling this motor, that overload switch goes from one to three. If the fan overloads, that switch will open up and shut the drive down and you'll get a fan M alarm. There's a red LED called fan M. That'll come on if you don't jump this out, so you have to jump it out with a piece of jumper wire. Let's move down and we'll look at the line input. Here's the line input. Uh, we have lugs again, lug terminals for R, S, and T. That makes the DC bus for the motor power modules, those transistor power modules that we replaced out. <laughs> that's, the, that's the DC bus that runs that spindle motor up there. Little r, little s, and t, they're actually wires. I didn't have no other way to represent it except with uh, this right here, another terminal board, but it's not actually a terminal board. 
it's wires that are connected to RS and T that go into the drive to uh, power up the power supplies for that drive. So you have the DC bus uh, uh, created from the large RS and T and then the control voltages like the power supplies for the control board are powered up from little r, little s, and little t. And both of those are 220 volts AC three phase in to that drive. There's the connections. Now I'll put this diagram up at the end of the video along with uh, other important documentation that you would like to see. But let me go back first to uh, what's going on with the test that I'm performing. I don't have the spindle motor with resolver feedback. So I've got to use uh, light bulbs to simulate that motor. And I use a resolver out of a knitting machine motor that's sitting on the back of that knitting machine uh, servo motor to uh, simulate the resolver feedback. Now the funny thing about this drive is that it will hunt. I'm not even rotating that resolver in that uh, knit machine servo motor. I'm just letting it sit there still. And this drive will hunt. When you enable that drive to run forward or run reverse, it will hunt and cause the U to V, the U to W, and the V to W phases on the output to energize. And that is what we're looking at when we see the light bulbs ping from one to the next to the next bank of light bulbs and then back around as if the motor will rotate, but <laughs> we're using light bulbs, so that's a, that's an amazing thing about this drive right here. You don't need the spindle motor to test it. All you need is a bank of light bulbs and a good resolver. Okay, folks. Thank you very much for coming by. I hope you all are having a good day. Let's go put our toes by the fire and <laughs> get warmed up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll see you next time.